for many, many years, people around the world have been talking about the great combination of German wines and Asian cuisines. And it's only a few years ago that we finally published a brochure, which is called Perfect Pairings. And this brochure was written by Jeannie Cho Lee. Jeannie Cho Lee is perhaps the most important critic on wine in Asia. And we're very pleased that we could bring her over to Germany. And today she's doing a presentation on typical Asian food with German wines. And we're just as pleased that Ronald Chow is here today. He is the chef of the Hong Kong Jockey Club, uh, one of the best known restaurants in Hong Kong. He flew over especially with his team. And I'm very excited to see what he is creating today and how well German wines are going to pair with the food we're going to get. Germany because of their refreshing character, because of the nature of the cool climate, its aromas, and, and the sheer diversity that comes along with refreshment value is really uh, one of the, the best wines. If you could just choose one, whether it's the Spätburgunder, Weißburgunder, the Rieslings, or that, that uh, you can introduce to a huge variety of Asian tables and feel comfortable that these wines will pair with the majority of the dishes in front of you. The idea of the Asian palette is to, for the next generation or two, help us define what makes our dining culture unique and what is the diversity. It's, it's not trying to pinpoint and say it's a fixed target. It's a moving target. It's an evolving, dynamic target. And it's the same with perfect pairings. It is about trying to approach it in a way that allows us to appreciate uh, the wonderful array of Asian flavors. Because one of the characters that makes a wine for me very valuable to pair with Chinese food, with Japanese or Korean, is how flexible and versatile it is. So for the first dish, the Shanghai Dees inspired pork knuckle jelly. With this dish, when I was looking at what are the type of wines I want to pair this with, well, again, as I mentioned to you, I'm looking not just for the pork knuckle, because if you think of pork, you're thinking, okay, it has to go with some sort of red wine. And I thought immediately of the condiments, the tomato marinated, preserved plum. There's a sweetness to this, and to me, it's like a Chinese pate and the combination of sweetness with this wonderful texture of the pork knuckle really made me think of two different wines, one with higher residual sugar and another with lower, to see really uh, what is the right acid sweetness balance that can make this dish really sing. Does it contrast? Does it complement? And does it just accompany? And sometimes when the flavors are really aggressive and strong, you know, all that wine can do in that situation is just accompany. And I call it like uh, doing ballroom dancing. You cannot have two dancers who are trying to lead. Otherwise, you'll be stepping on each other's feet and not going anywhere. You have to allow one to be able to take center stage. Because 
教過書啦，同埋咧喺嗰度咩咧就攞到一個大使級嘅證書啦。咁同時咧，我而家喺香港賽馬會做嘢之餘咧，公司有幸去支持去推廣香港嘅美食，所以能夠大家能夠集成呢個學合作嘅機會，能夠有機會嚟到德國咁樣。So the second course we're having,、uh, I call it Hong Kong in the sixties. Now I'm not sure the chef would agree with me, but this is when you had the height of British influence in Hong Kong in Cantonese cuisine. Baked crab meat, which it, you know, they use breadcrumbs and onions and baked in a way that's very European. And it is also so classically Hong Kong that if you go to a typical high-end fine dining Cantonese restaurant in Hong Kong, you'll find that、uh, you, you'll see this on the menu. The wine that I was thinking of really And the grape variety that I went to directly from、uh, from Germany was really the Weissburgunder, the the, the creaminess, the roundness, because、uh, the crab meat is baked, and there's a richness. There's a little bit of butter、uh, in the seasoning as well, and the texture all really calls for a rounder, softer, fuller-bodied style. We will be getting two rieslings. Both are dry. We're going to be pairing it with delicious steamed sea bass fillet. And I love this dish when I tried it in Hong Kong because it has this、uh, wonderful, crunchy, crispy yellow bean texture with the two top rieslings that、uh, we'll be having next. In the dry style, which I find really very, very versatile, Riesling as a variety is one of the top five most widely recognized varieties and styles in China. For many years, Hong Kong has been the culinary capital of Asia because we have eleven thousand restaurants in Hong Kong, representing like the different regional cuisines of China. And also cuisines from all different corners of the world. So for many years, we are well known a paradise for gourmet. Now,、uh, five years ago, we took a very bold step by removing all wine-related duties. Previously, if you export a bottle of wine to Hong Kong, you need to pay like hundred percent duty. But since two thousand and eight, we move all duties and also all the duty-related custom control. So since then, Hong Kong has become like really the regional、uh, wine trading hub for the whole of Asia. They use us as the platform for we export into China, into、uh, Japan, and also Korea. So since then, a, a whole host of like wine-related businesses、uh, they flourish in Hong Kong. These two Spätburgunders are coming from more of the northern regions of Germany, and you can see that both of these wines, what they have in common, is this wonderful minerality and this really aromatic, sensual、uh, characteristic on the nose that I think that、uh, you'll really appreciate with the duck. And it's a stewed dish that、uh, braised beef cheek with chestnuts, very meaty and and full. So really, the my criteria for asking about wines was to go toward the southern part of Germany, where there's a little bit more glycerol, more mouthfeel, more generosity in the wines. So with a different palate texture. So this one having more. Angularity, linear notes,、um, and and a focus, and hopefully that will、uh, be able to spark your interest in in pairing with the beef cheeks. So enjoy the next course. Sweetened 
almond cream and egg white and papaya, a combination that has really been refined in Hong Kong. So the level of sweetness that we get here is at an oscillation level, which has some botrytis, some roundness and sweetness. But, uh, you know, ice wine, which is very popular in China, has become a kind of a brand in, in China for sweet wines. They enjoy it kind of on its own, not really paired with desserts because it's a little bit too sweet for the desserts that we have. And here, um, at, a, at an Auslese level, a, even uh, a beer in Auslese, I think with enough age and roundness and, and smoothness would, would be able to pair with a lot of the desserts that we have in Asia. If I were to give you one takeaway from this afternoon, I would like to just say that perfect pairing is a journey that all of us are taking together, that we're sharing. This meal, to me, was a journey about perfect pairings and trying to find you know, the, the combinations that work. Each time we have a new chef, different ingredients, it's going to change because the factors involved in perfect pairing is so complex and, um, and, and so uh, different each time that if we approach it in a way that we're exploring every time, that we're experimenting, and most of all, that we're having fun with it, that it's joyful, that it, it, it heightens our experience with life and with food and wine, uh, that that is really the, the purpose of this afternoon. Um, and, and thank you for, for sharing this journey with me today. Thank you.